Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. Going to show you how to do a shooting board, but a special one. If you like doing boxes, but you want to do something a little different, miter the corners. Going to show you how to make a mitered shooting board that will allow you the greatest of precision. Stay with me. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. I love making wood hinge boxes. I've made hundreds, perhaps thousands of them, and as complicated as that joint may look, depending on your skill level, it really isn't. You just have to have two pieces of wood with square corners, and the box joint pretty much does it all. However, made a few of these, actually I haven't finished this one, where I use a miter instead. And as simple as that seems, it is one of the more complicated, or I should say more difficult, joints to get right. It is so hard to prevent gaps. It's got to be literally 45 degrees. So this is a, um, this is a shooting board designed to cut a miter in the end of the board. Correct. So this is that type of a shooting board. I actually am going to go through and I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to modify this a little bit, make a few changes that's going to make it a little bit easier to use. But if this is something that interests you, I'm going to show you. Once you learn how to have, your, once you have a decent hand plane, learn how to sharpen it. And I'll leave a, I will leave a reference to a video we did called 32 Seconds of Sharp, and that'll help you take care of that part of it. But then once you build this, it allows you that level of precision that when you put this together, there will be no gaps. And you'll be proud of your work. All right, let's go. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the parts and the overall dimensions. Now, the only problem with this one, and it became apparent right away, is if you've got a piece in here that's of any width, you're unsupported in your middle of nowhere with your plane, which just kind of makes it a little unnerving. So what I want to do right away is I want to make this longer so that my plane has lots of uh, resting space prior to the blade engaging the wood. Uh, I think this length is fine. So we'll stay with that, which is 16. Now I also want to mention, this is one inch MDF. You may not have that. I'm using it because A, it's nice and flat, B, it wears well, and C, it allows me to get a fairly deep groove here, which gives good registration for the plane. But you could use three quarter, you could use plywood too. I just prefer MDF for this type of a uh, situation. So if I'm gonna be 16 this way, that's 10 inches. I'm gonna drag that out a little bit farther. Uh, 15, I think we'll do. So 16 by 15 by one inch MDF. Now you need to have uh, these two cleats front and back. I should mention the most obvious one. This cleat underneath is what catches that the shooting board keeps from moving forward. So that's going to be the same length, which is going to be 16 inches. Doesn't need to be very wide, an inch would be enough, inch, and it could even be as little as a half an inch. And we'll have that solid wood, so we'll just put solid. I'll use whatever materials I have. Now, we have to have, we have to create this top piece that's going to support the plane, and that's going to be held in place by the piece in the front and back. You want this to be square with this. So what I did is I simply made sure that this base piece was perfectly square, and then I clamped this on, clamped this on, squeezed them, and that was the best way of ensuring that that fence, which is your piece your work's gonna lay up against, is going to be exact. So we need, that, we need this to be, I'm gonna make this one a little bit taller. I'm gonna go two inch. I'll uh, get our length first to stay with our numbers. We need this to be 15 and a half. We need two of them, one on front, one on back. Okay, two inches. I think I said two inches. Yep. And that's Baltic birch. That's five eighths. You could use half, but I'm going to go with five eighths because I think I have some. Now I like Baltic birch because it's a superior. It's a superior plywood. It essentially is birch throughout and just really good stuff. We need two pieces across the top. I had to build this one up in order for it to catch the uh, 
to catch this part of the plane. The first one wasn't high enough, but if we raise this up two inches instead of where it is, I think we'll be okay with one piece. So that means we're going to need, well, actually, they're, they're going to need to be, and I want them back here as well. Just you, You'll see how we're going to do this on the table saw, why we're going to need this piece. Uh, that's going to be two and a half inches. We may as well make this one two and a half, and then they're the same. So, uh, first of all, let's get our length, and our length is going to be the 15 inches depth, 15 inches depth, plus two of these, and that's not actually five eighths; it's nine sixteenths. So it's going to be an inch and an eighth plus the 15, 16 and an eighth. And those, what did we say they were going to be? Two and a half by five eighths. Baltic, Baltic ply. Now, before I go any further, I want to check and see if this piece is square. That way, if it isn't, I've got room to make it square before I get it down to final dimension. Just check your diagonals. This is almost, uh, actually, it's a little bit strong of 25 inches. And that one's under. It's under by almost a sixteenth. So one of these sides isn't right. So I'm going to make this a little bit. It's fifteen. I'm going to go. I'm going to go sixteen, and maybe a, an eighth of an inch. And then if I have to, I'll use the plane or I'll figure out a way to get that squared up. That's out just a little bit. So I'm going to use my sled, which should get it right on. I left that just a little bit stronger than 16. Didn't quite move it over enough to finish the edge. That should be good. This is the most important important part. That is 21 and 15 sixteenths. And that's 21 and 15 sixteenths. Okay, here's our pieces. This is our base, and everything is going to be referenced off of this. This has to be square, but before we check it, I just want to go through. So we've got our piece that's going to go front and back. These have got to be addressed. And then this piece is going to sit back here, and this is actually is more for the process we use to cut the 45. This piece is going to sit up here, and this is our cleat. The last thing we'll do, and that goes on the underside of this piece to hold it firmly against the front of the bench. Now, as I mentioned, the first thing we want to check and verify is that this base piece, and I'm using one inch MDF, you could use three quarter. I checked my diagonals, but I also want to check it with my square. Now I want to get a little more accurate than that so I'm going to use a, a uh, feeler gauge and I'll get out my thou and a half. Now what I'm going to do is just put that So out here it pinches it tight, but in here it doesn't. So I can make an adjustment to that. You decide how fussy you want to be, but I'm going to take a little bit of material off of this. And I'm going to do it with my hand plane. Don't worry about that. If MDF takes the edge off, you can sharpen it, put it right back. So I need a little more off of here than I do out there. So I'm going to take a pass that's going to go from here to about there. And then I'll take another pass that'll go all the way to the end. And I'll check and make sure that my blade is projecting parallel to the sole. I don't want it out too far. A little more than that. Uh, 
No, I said two, but I'm actually doing four. Okay, let's check that. Make sure there's no glue or anything on your square. So it's out here first. It pulls tight. Try that again. Yeah, that's good. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Okay, these pieces, these pieces need to have a 45 cut on them, but I need to have enough room so that I have a sufficient material here to support the plane when it's sitting on its edge. So, I'm going to guess and say we need to pull this back probably to about there. So I'm going to mark this over here. So we'll cut these one more time. And then we'll cut them 45 up here. Now I'm gonna clean this up after so you don't have to think that that needs to be precise right now. You'll see what we do. And then we'll go in here and we'll trim this one as well. We're gonna cut that 45. Now, I want this to be as precise as I can get it. So I don't, I, um, this is going to be my reference surface. So everything I shoot is gonna lay up against that. And I'm not satisfied just to glue and screw it on. I want it to be absolutely tight against this. So I'm going to go in, I'm gonna glue it. I'm gonna hit it with a couple of nails to hold it in place. And then I've got two pieces of MDF, scrap MDF. I've jointed these surfaces and I'm then going to clamp it like this so that that is perfectly straight. And if you're wondering why, if I put this piece in here, it does not lay up there perfectly tight just because, you know, this stuff never comes perfectly flat. So rather than deal with that, I'll ensure it doesn't happen. So I'm gonna put it in the vise. And I'll be somewhat um, careful with the glue so as not to have a whole bunch squeezing out on the underside that I then have to deal with. And I don't want it hanging down below. So I'm gonna hold it up just a little bit. I'll show you how we adjust that after the fact. And I will just go in here to make this a little bit neater. and Put a mark so I know where I'm putting glue. Now this stuff really sucks up the glue, so you've gotta be a little more generous than you might be on solid wood. And this is why, or I always glue whenever I'm building something like this for the simple reason that it acts like a weld. If you screw it or nail it, there's always room for it to move slightly. If you add glue, that prevents any of that movement and the metal fasteners just come in and make it a little more secure. Now I'm purposely holding this so that it's a little shy of being flush. And this is more or less just to help position those. So when I clamp it, it won't move. Now we'll get this. Now 
I've got squeeze out all along there. So I know that that is pulled tight. I'm not so concerned about this one. I'm not going to use it in the same manner. I'll wait for that to get a little bit rubbery and then I'll go in and I'll clean that out. So it's a lot easier than removing it after it's hard. And if you do it now, it's going to smear everywhere. So I'll give that a few minutes. Okay, the glue is set up, but there's still going to be a fair bit of force slamming against that. So can't rely on just a couple of finished nails in the glue. So I'm going to go in and put some screws in there. And yeah, we'll go right here. And I'm going to double up on this end since it gets the majority of the force. Now I held that off the bottom so it's sitting below the surface of the MDF but there's no guarantee that it's going to be exact so what we do is go over now to the table saw and up on the edge like that we're going to trim these so that the distance from here to there is precise on both. We don't take much off just enough to make sure there's the same. No great amount of force on this, so a couple of uh, nails and glue will be sufficient. Just let that tack for a second. And then we'll put one out here, and this is mostly to support what we're about to do on the table saw. So it too only needs a bit of glue and a few nails. Well, the glue's dry, and I want to go over and I want to dial in my fence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my fence to the left side of the blade because my blade tilts away from the fence. I'm going to then turn this over and I'm going to cut a 45 that will trim this so that everything is flush and it'll also cut down into the MDF. And the purpose of doing that is that's what the, fence, that's what the plane is going to ride on. And then I'm going to do the uh, opposite cut, cutting along here and create that notch. However, I need this to be as close to being 45 as possible. So I'm going to get a piece of one inch MDF. I'm going to set my fence, my blade at 45 degrees and with my protractor check and see if it is indeed dialed in. Almost all saws have a stop at 90 and 45. So I went right to the stop and then if it's out we'll adjust the stop as well as checking just for this purpose. I'm using one inch MDF just because it's nice and stable, it's flat, and it's going to give me a pretty good reference surface in terms of how. Okay, that is not as close as we could get it. Not out by much, but it's out a little. So. It's uh, not quite 45, so we've got to go a little bit farther. So I've got to go in there and find out how Okay. Took us a few minutes, but we managed to get in to the uh, underside of the cabinet. 
and readjust that stop so that we're right on 45. Now, got that raised up. We'll make a cut. We may have to come in and do it again. So we put the blade, we put the fence on the left side of the blade. This is the reason why we put this piece on here so that this remains parallel to the bench top. We're not uh, we're not touching any nails or metal. We can go through and make that cut. I want to come up a little bit higher. To finish that notch in order to do this we can't get far enough we can't get we can't uh, get the fence in position and have the blade where we want it without having the blade hit the fence so what I'm going to do is just I've got a spacer I've already measured it I need to be about an inch and a sixteenth so we'll put that on there and just put one screw in there to hold it. Make sure it's countersunk deep enough that it doesn't interfere. Now, uh, that should drop out of the way safely so I don't, I'm not worrying about that. Again, make sure there's no metal in the way. Oops. Have I got that in the right spot? Okay. The nice thing about this is if you're left or right, it's all going to be the same. You're just going to turn it the other way. So I'm right-handed. So I'm going to put the cleat. I'm going to put the cleat on the front side, obviously, with this on my right side. I'm just using a piece of Baltic birch. And I'm going to screw this on because this too takes a fair beating. Not from just use, but when you put it into place each time, it tends to get slammed against the front of the bench, so don't rely on just glue. Not that glue isn't strong enough, but when you're gluing to MDF, there's not a tremendous amount of strength between this layer of MDF and the soft core underneath. So, Although the glue will hold it in position, you really want some metal fasteners to secure it. to have a clamp just to help hold that in place. I'm using it even though the cleat is there. Clamp will keep it from sliding side to side. Now <clears throat> we have to break this in. What I mean by that is ultimately this area and this area to the left and to the right of the blade is what's going to control the depth of cut. So somewhere uh, right along here and somewhere up in here is going to be where it'll rest, but we have to remove that material. Now I could have cut a little chamfer back there, but I don't think it's going to be a big deal.
Okay, I can see where that is. Now, if you want to, you could come in and you could soak this area with cyanacrylate. I'll show you what I mean. And I suggest that only because the MDF is uh, relatively soft on the inner core. But if you go in and just drench that area with thin cyanacrylate, which is super glue for wood, that'll make that quite stiff and it'll just make that wear, or allow that to wear better over time. And that sets up pretty quickly. I'm not gonna worry about the, the wood part. Now I'm gonna get a couple pieces of wood. We'll try this out and test it and see how accurate we made it. Now you don't have to cut these on the table saw. You could actually literally start from a uh, square end and go through. It might take you a little while. Or you can cut them some on the saw or chop saw and then go in and refine them with this. Now, I just did that one, so let's check it and see. Grab a square. We put those two together. That actually looks really good. If it wasn't, if we needed to adjust it, and sometimes you may have to just because you're cutting to fit, not, a, not cutting to build. You can go in here and we could raise this up with a piece of tape on either end. If we did it on this side, if we did it on this side, we're actually gonna make it a little more than 45 degrees. i taken off, no, sorry. If we did it that way, we're gonna do a little less. We're gonna take off some from the heat, from the toe. And if we put it back here, we'd raise it this way, we'd take it off the heel and make it more than 45 degrees. But either way, you can go in and customize it. Now, this is designed to work with material up to about three quarters of an inch thick, I think is what we have, a little more than that. Seven eighths, actually. And it gives us, we don't really have that capacity because you can't start your plane out here in the middle of nowhere. If I would say right about there would be the limit, and that means I could use an 11 inch wide piece. And you can build one of these to to accommodate whatever size pieces that you want. If you needed some support for a long piece out here, you could just get a piece of one inch MDF and hold it out there to balance it. But that's your shooting board for doing a miter, like so, and it works extremely well. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.